Tweet, 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 tweet. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have a strange little existence to examine that really does ask more questions than it answers, being the Tamatama no Mi. The Tamatama no Mi is an unclassified devil fruit, which is new and interesting, that allows its user to transform their body into an egg, which upon cracking open, will begin a cycle of ongoing chicken power evolution that gives its user a sort of Zoan-like effect with access to different forms, but through some really strange conditions that calls into question exactly what kind of fruit this is. In any case, we will get into all of that, but for now, this fruit was consumed by Tamago, which means egg, although this name changes with each of his subsequent forms. Although as he is introduced to us, he is Baron Tamago, and this fruit was technically first displayed during the Fishman Island arc. So as you can probably tell by now, the Tama Tama no Mi takes its name from the Japanese word for egg being Tamago. Although Tama itself does also mean ball in Japanese, which naturally turns into some slang for testicles, given that you would say that as Kintama. But here we are strictly speaking about eggs not man eggs. And obviously enough, in English, it has been translated as the egg egg fruit. Now let's begin to detail the sheer madness of this fruit, which is one of, if not the most unique in the series. So as far as we can tell, upon consuming this fruit, the user will be granted a form that resembles that of an egg, which can be seen quite clearly on Tamago, donning his half cracked eggshell wear, which when he was first introduced, I just thought that was, you know, a bold fashion choice, but it actually appears to be the core of the fruit. And this is because despite appearing as a human with a very attention grabbing fashion preference, the user actually takes on the properties of an egg, meaning that if they are damaged significantly, i.e. cracked, then the yolk of the egg will spring out of them, which goes on to immediately evolve into the next form, which in this case would be Viscount Hyoko. And in this form, the user is well and truly a chicken or a chick anyway, as it turns their skin yellow and gives them wings. And allegedly the user is also much stronger in this state, although that was never seen in the manga, as Pedro just immediately cut Tamago up again. However, in the anime, Viscount Hyoko is shown to have a far greater degree of speed. With that said, that is technically filler, although we can safely assume that the user's physical abilities do receive a general all around upgrade. But interesting, Interestingly enough, despite being a living chick at this point, the user's body still retains the properties of egg. So if they are struck down once more, then the same effect will occur. Their body will have its yolk fall out, which then goes on to evolve into the third and final incarnation, which is referred to as Count Niwatori. Now this state once again comes with a physical upgrade, although we do have very little evidence to determine exactly what the effect would be. What we do know is that Count Niwatori is at the very least durable enough to tank an explosion at point blank range caused by the ever troublesome Jaguar Mink Pedro, which isn't to be underestimated at all, because characters like Perispero have lost entire arms in explosions like this, so Count Niwatori is no joke, despite the fact that his form does look admittedly hilarious. And that's very much it for the cycle. If Count Niwatori is defeated, then the same thing happens. The egg yolk comes out and restarts the cycle, evolving back into Baron Tamago. So this fruit is super, super weird and entirely unclassifiable by our current knowledge. The issue is that the Tama Tama no Mi takes on the properties of all three classes. So first of all, it obviously reflects a Zoan type by having an animal basis, but it also evokes a Paramecia through the gift of a strange mechanism like evolution, and it even has some Logia basis by giving the user the ability to regenerate their own body and potentially even intangibility whilst in their yoke form. And given the existence of a fruit like Charlotte Kartikuri's Mochi Mochi no Mi, which has been dubbed as a special Paramecia, I would say that my inclination would be to classify the Tama Tama no Mi as something like a special Zoan, an animal based fruit with an extra mechanic, kind of like how the Mochi Mochi no Mi takes on multiple established and usually singular Paramecia powers. But to discuss this a bit further, let's delve into to Tamago's use of the fruit, and he is a fairly prominent figure of the world, being a mainstay of the Big Mom Pirates, as well as being worth an incredible 429 million berries. And Tamago has certainly made fine use of this fruit to get there, because while he certainly isn't, you know, the most powerful of figures, he does take advantage of the endless cycle of regeneration, which is a supremely underrated feature of the Tama Tama no Mi. Because think of it this way, anytime the user incurs damage designed to kill them, this fruit says, okay, bruh, have some egg, and I'm going to just go ahead and regenerate into another form of chicken. So it brings up the idea that this fruit may make its user entirely unkillable. I mean, how are you supposed to deal with an opponent who will always regenerate from a fatal attack? Well, it may not be quite as foolproof as it seems because the question has been brought up in the series regarding how vulnerable the user is whilst in mid evolution in their eggy goop. It's very potentially the case that this is the only state in which the user can actually be killed, that few brief moments of formation. However, this has obviously not been tested. Also rather interestingly, the 
fruit does not make their user completely immune from permanent damage, despite its regenerative nature, because Tamago does carry a scar given to him by Pedro from the past, which resulted in the loss of his left eye. And this scar, as well as lack of an eye, are carried over into each chickeny incarnation, which brings up the idea that maybe only certain zones of Tamago's body are reflected by this fruit's regenerative properties, meaning that maybe if you were to decapitate him, then that may be outside of the fruit's purview, making this a very specific existence that the user needs to be very, very careful with. Alternatively, it may also be possible that Tamago consumed this fruit after his initial duel with Pedro, thus carrying his scarred body into his new chickeny life. And now as for an awakening with this, whatever this is, well, I don't even know where to begin. This one is so much tougher to predict in general because of its lack of a defined classification. But my initial thought of an awakening would be to add extra forms into the cycle. For example, before it was revealed that Count Niwatori would simply become Baron Tamago again, it was hypothesized that he would just keep ranking up because there are plenty of positions above that of Count so why not work our way up the hierarchy? You know, an awakening of the Tamatama no Mi might allow its user to reach the exclusive level of Duke Fowl, Prince Poultry, and even the most coveted role of all, King Cock. The potential is endless, and I see no reason why we should be restricted to the mere level of count. And in that respect, this fruit could have multiple awakenings with each new rank, perhaps even a series of mini awakenings, if you will. And if you won't, then I don't care because I've said it already. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming an egg, a chick, and a chicken, human. Fascinatingly enough, as much as I did state earlier that this fruit upon consumption would grant the user an egg-like form, I must stress that this is unconfirmed, and likely always will be, because there is a chance that the Tama Tama no Mi very much incorporates the idea of the chicken and the egg dilemma, where we ask ourselves which came first. So with that in mind, the user of this fruit could find themselves at any stage of the given cycle, and who knows, it might even be determined at random. So someone who didn't know what type of fruit they were eating may find themselves evolving into Count Niwatori, mistaking it for a Zoan, and then finding quite the surprise upon their defeat and subsequent de evolution into an egg-like existence. Also, just to point this out, the chicken and egg dilemma is often used metaphorically, and the general consensus of the might of science is that the egg came first, although it was likely to be laid by a creature that was not a chicken. So that would also kind of make sense in this context, because say a human user eats the fruit and then becomes a chicken egg and begins the cycle of evolution of a new creature. Also, something of note is that with each subsequent form, the user of this fruit takes on a speech quirk, with Tamago adding a peep to the end of his sentences in the form of Viscount Hyoko, as well as a clock as Count Niwatori. So you will not be immune from sounding like a chicken, which is in stark contrast to a general zone type fruit, which usually give their users perfect speech, no matter what animal they are. Furthermore, the Tama Tama no Mi also demands a say in your wardrobe, as each transformation will leave the user with a brand new garb and color scheme, reflecting that new stage of their lives. So at the very least, you probably won't ever have to worry about about dressing yourself. So where do we land with this bizarre fruit? I'm not so sure to be honest with you. There is a startlingly powerful benefit to the Tama Tama no Mi in regards to its incredible regenerative nature. In most combative situations, it would seem that the user simply cannot be killed unless it is done by a very particular method. So that is certainly not to be underestimated under any circumstance. Plus there is a definite boost in physical prowess the further you proceed into the evolution chain. The question is, are those two features worth becoming an egg human for? And it's tough to examine because let's be real, this fruit is another joke existence from Oda who wanted to draw something funny and quirky, not meant to be examined in any serious context, but unfortunately that is the situation we find ourselves in here today. And I personally don't think that the trade-off of having a giant eggshell permanently draped around me is worth it, because I mean, just think of how difficult it would be to go to the bathroom and everything. But the idea of becoming various stages of a chicken don't exactly appeal a lot to me either. So despite the funky fresh unknown of this fruit, I'm probably going to give it a miss because there is just too much out there that I would prefer. Almost everything, really. Almost. And with that, we are going to commit the Tama Tama no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are stepping into the era of Punk Hazard with another New World Logia held by the mad scientist Caesar Clown being the Gasu Gasu no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of Shinani retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Tama Tama no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. What would you say to a sister manga to One Piece where you follow Sabo parallel to Luffy's timeline? 
yeah, I like the idea in general, because I think that One Piece holds infinite potential for side stories like that. Although in regards to Sabo specifically, yeah, I definitely read it, but I would prefer to focus on almost anyone else. Sabo is a character who has never particularly excited me, but at the same time, it would probably include a lot of fun with the Revolutionary Army, so it might be worth it for all the other characters that would inevitably appear in it. Something else I'd probably rather see though is a manga adaptation of the Ace prequel novels, because they have some really interesting stuff in them. What do you think how One Piece will end? Don't say Luffy will become Pirate King in end. Eh, okay. Luffy won't become the Pirate King, I guess. He'll be killed by Blackbeard in the most depressing moment in the entire history of media. And immediately after that, Oda will pass away from the grief of losing his main character, thus forever leaving One Piece on a cliffhanger. But obviously Luffy will become the Pirate King. I guess what you want me to examine is how the series will actually technically conclude, because I doubt that becoming the Pirate King will be the very final action. Kind of like how Roger was the Pirate King for the final period of his life. I do sadly think that One Piece will either end in Luffy's death, which will reignite another new age, or with him passing the straw hat onto some kid to restart the cycle of inherited will. Whatever the case, I think it ends with either Luffy or a shot of the straw hat.